Before we get into today's video, I would like to thank all of my lovely channel members and especially my lovely darling stewards. Bella Mare, Husky HD, Hopeful, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. Thank you for your support and also a huge thank you for all of my darling mates for your continued support. Now I hope you enjoy the video and please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you. My name is Miss Holmes. I'm a torture sommelier. Me and my kind made it our mission to continue what the Hellborn have neglected to do over the past hundred years when Hell modernized. In other words, I'm here to torture you and make you regret every decision you ever made as they all combined led to you being before me. The demon before you was completely wrapped in bandages. Runes were drawn upon them to keep him in place as he stood there. He was a special little fella. A leatherworker demon. Probably the closest thing to Hellraiser's Cenobites in Hell. These demons had their pleasure receptors put on Max. I suppose to numb them over the endless years they would spend in Hell. The pleasure becoming so stale they go mad. Their existence, torture, yada yada, but why wait? He would die via extermination anyways before he would regret his eternal existence. When Valentino had brought him in, the moth explained that he had been shoving needles into his body while watching Angel Dust videos. Now on topic of Angel Dust, the reason this guy was here to begin with was the spider demon. Apparently, this guy was a hyper stalker. While staying away from Angel, he went after any actor who performed with Angel, doing horrible things to them. Sure, Valentino wanted this guy to be dealt with, as at the moment there was a bunch of actors refusing to work with Angel because of this piece of shit. But you? You were here for vengeance. For all the poor souls this guy harmed for his obsession. And you'd make sure he'd never see the light of the pentagram sun ever again. You're sitting on a red velvet chair as you applied another layer of mint-scented oil to your nose. The smell in the torture room was... foul. And even your victim had vomited after he had awoken. The cause of the smell were multiple buckets lined up against the wall beneath the double-sided mirror that led to an observation room. Behind the glass sat Valentino and Angel Dust. This was a personal matter for the two, and it felt wrong to keep them from the sight. Val was silently staring into the white room, smoking. Angel, meanwhile, didn't dare to speak up. He had seen Val angry before, he had seen Val furious before, but this Val, being the scary silent type, wasn't his style and it frightened Angel Dust to no end. So he made himself as small as possible while staring at you. The two men watched you stand up. A demon whose gimmick is that pleasure is pain, and pleasure is also pleasure, meant that you needed to be creative and that humiliation as well as body horror was required over making a bloody display. But sadly, for your plan to work as intended, you needed to deal with some physical damage to begin with, which you knew felt good for him, and you hated yourself for having to do this. With a cold expression, you grabbed a light bulb from a metal table that stood next to you. You held it up to the ceiling. It was clean. In fact, he had freshly purchased it. The demon grunted as he stared at you. He was confused, but too proud to admit that he was desperately afraid. Well, let's get started then, you said, standing up. 
Without as much as twitching a single muscle on your face, you shoved the light bulb into the demon's mouth. His eyes were focused on you. You're dressed in a somewhat tight black leather outfit. It had taken you quite the convincing to make Valentino give you a version of it without a boob window. You needed it for your job as it kept nasty liquids and blood away. But also it fit quite well with your sand-filled gloves. Your preferred weapon of combat. Made sure they fit your hand perfectly. Pulling them back as far as you could. And the demon's eyes widened. As moments later, your fists crashed into his jaw, shattering the glass bulb in his mouth, as well as knocking out multiple of his teeth. He screamed. Exactly though, those screams were of utter bliss. Your stomach turned, but you kept it inside you. He moaned and groaned. So why is she pleasuring him, boss? Asked Angel Dust in the observation room. And thankfully, you knew your shit. Literally. And all Vel did was say, Just watch, baby. This was, after all, merely a preparation of what was to come. The torture you had selected today was Gochizo Zeme, a torture method coming from feudal Japan. It was used to humiliate and punish prisoners. It was quite literally the force feeding of things that usually went into the toilet. However, due to your situation in hell, as well as the demon before you, you needed a more potent mixture. Using your connections, you managed to acquire sloth demon carcasses. Hellborn, of course. Freshly delivered to you via imps from Hell's sloth lair directly. The creatures had the appearance of drowned victims and smelled just as bad. And you had fermented the corpses over the course of three months in barrels that you had filled with a nutrient paste until the bodies had completely liquefied. Leaving behind a bluish greenish sludge with some tufts of hair still on top. But most importantly, was what was inside the slime. Billions of teeny tiny life forms. You're certain if a single droplet of this stuff were to somehow reach Earth, it would cause a pandemic the size of the Black Plague. Once your victim calmed down enough, he hung his head. Blood flowing past his lips. He was grinning. Challengingly so. If we want to see this a good time, all you need to do is ask. <laughs> With a toothless smile, he watched you bend down to pick up something next to the buckets. It was a funnel with a belt. Oh well, this will shut you up for good, you said nonchalantly. Stepping towards him, you shoved the metal tube into his throat, causing him to gag and more blood to spew out of the tiny hole. You secured the funnel with the belt tightly, before coming to the fun part of the torture. Using a crank on the wooden structure that you had bound him against, you turned him horizontally on his back. With horror in his eyes, he then watched you pick up one of the buckets walk over to him and then you slowly emptied the bucket right into his throat the demon gagged and screamed and only didn't vomit because you shoved a cork into the funnel hole while he wrote as he squirmed you smiled down at him as you held his nose shut with your hand. Don't go losing your lunch now. After all, we still have dinner, you know. You began filling the demon up, emptying bucket after bucket, and you kept going even after the bandages around his stomach burst open from the liquid. The demon suffered immensely. 
and when you were done, you had passed out. From the taste, the smell, and the horror of the entire situation. It was absolutely disgusting, but at least right now, the demon felt... good? This gross inflation of his belly, to him, due to his condition, felt like a pleasant fullness. He made a gurgling noise akin to laughter. But that's when you stepped around him, lowering your head to his ear and whispered. Let's see if you're still this excited in a few days, son. It took the demon a few seconds to understand what you meant. And then his expression was pure horror. This stuff is liquid sickness. And there are illnesses, mutations and parasites that haven't been given a name by humans yet as they don't exist on Earth. What is about to happen to you? <laughs> well, let's call it the equivalent of a zombie apocalypse, all directly located in your gut. And you will be sealed in this chamber for a very long time. Left to fester. At least until Valentino says that you have learned your lesson. You then glanced over to the mirror. And if I were you, I'd hope he doesn't forget that you're here. It was then the demon truly realized how fucked he was. Without demons constantly regenerated damages, these parasites inside him would be able to feed on him practically eternally. He didn't know where he was, so there was also a very low chance some angel would release him from this by killing him. He smiled gently, placing a hand on his forehead. Well, look at that. You're already burning up, darling. You stepped away, grabbing another bucket. Here, have some of Mama's medicine. And then off to bed. Okay? You left the chamber hours later, the smell of decay sticking to your body as you walked. Finding yourself in a white hallway, it was a large underground complex, connected to your manor, but also the V-Tower. From the observation room stepped Valentino with angel dust. The spider had a sickening expression while Val was elated. Sammy, baby, I'd hug you, but some of that gunk is on your clothes. You nodded. That was an amazing show. Ugh, oh, I wish I had my camera with me. I told you no photos. Oh, no, 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 not photos. A camera! I wanted to film it. You looked away. This is supposed to be torture, not one of your films. I don't do this for recognition, or to get someone off. I do this for my clients, who are in pain. This is supposed to be torture, not one of your films. I don't do this for recognition, or to get someone off. I do this for my clients, who are in pain. And I especially don't want some sick in the head demon going on rampages because they someone would get off to what I would throw at them once they're here. Because, for one, they would definitely not get off to what I throw at them. And second, this is supposed to remove injustice, not to create more. This is right for punishment. Punishment the Hellborn have become too comfortable to deliver. Val pretended to understand your speech, but in reality it was Angel whose ears perked up. Man, you kinda sound like a more fucked up Charlie. This earned my dramatic sigh from Valentino and a questioning look from you. Mm. Angel, baby, how often do I need to tell you to not speak of her in my presence? Uh, sorry, Val. Uh, Charlie who? Angel looked at Val, who glared. I'll tell you later, I suppose. Okay, gentlemen, may I please take a shower now? Oh yes, baby. Can I watch? 
you're deadpan. Sorry, force of habit. But once you're presentable, you definitely have to come visit. I have a brandy with your name on it. You know I don't drink. This earned your displeased dreams from Val. But I know what that is code for. If you wanted to get into my pants, even after that, you pointed at the door behind you. You're free to try. I don't mind a distraction after today. Great, uh, Angel Baby, let's get back to the tower and let Miss Holmes freshen up a bit. As the two walked towards the second exit, which led to the V-Tower tunnel, you faced the opposite direction. You threw your clothes into a wash basin to soak into some soapy water that you had already prepared, with neutral smelling industrial cleaner. After all, no one would take you serious if you smelled like a flower or cotton candy. But considering Val's invitation, you should make sure to at least smell good yourself. By now you had ended up in bed with all three Vs. Vox, Velvet and Val. Val had skill in bed, sure, that was... By now you had ended up in bed with all three of the Vs. Vox, Velvet and Val. Valentino had skill in bed, that was for sure, and he was the only demon who ever made you finish properly. But he was afraid of you, and the knowledge you hid inside your skull. He desperately didn't want to be on the other side of the observation window, and unlike the other two, he had overseen every single torture you had committed since you started working for the V's, and he knew the horrors you were capable of committing, without even a change of facial expression. Vox, meanwhile, was malleable, seeing you more like a rivalry of sorts. It was obvious that he wanted you because others wanted you. And because of that, he was more agreeable. Or, as you would call it, he was a little bitch. And Velvet, she knew what she wanted. It usually ended like a cat. She definitely knew what she wanted, and usually spending the night with her ended in a catfight between the two of you. A lot of broken furniture, as neither of you wanted to submit to the other. Honestly, you were of the opinion that should you even be the first to give up, she would instantly lose all interest in you. And in hell, it was better to keep the interest of your bosses. You let cool water cascade over your body, slowly breathing in and out of your mouth. And that's when you finally allowed yourself to vomit right into the drain. Even going down on your knees for it. You felt weak and dizzy. The vile smell from the torture seemed to linger inside your lungs. It had taken you all your strength to not lose your lunch in front of everyone. But it was humiliating enough that you knew that it did get you on your knees. It was desperately you grabbed your shampoo and wrapped it over your nose in the hopes that it would fix it, and it sort of did. It wasn't perfect. You remained under the shower for what felt like hours, but when you stepped out, only 40 minutes had passed. You then sighed, putting on a cocktail dress putting your scarlet hair up into a ponytail, looking at your reflection in a mirror. You have to admit, I gave you a nice body, undoubtedly. Red hair, fair skin that was rosy where it mattered, pointy ears that were finely attuned to pick up subtle sounds. Pointy ears that were finely attuned to pick up on subtle sounds like breaking bone and yet striking green eyes. Perhaps Velvet liked you so much because you'd be one of her top models if you chose to change your vocation. Well, perhaps if the Hellborn continued with their inti- Well, 
Perhaps, if the Hellborn continue with their intended function, you could convince yourself you're no longer needed. But then, you shook your head to get the thoughts out. No, this... This was too addicting to you. Breaking people who never experienced true consequences in their lives. <sighs> that was just too satisfying. We turned your attention towards the basement. Now dressed to impress. In the same dress that Val liked a lot. Simply... Now dressed in the cocktail dress that Vel had specifically gifted to you. It was simple yet slutty with his also important boob window. Before leaving you grabbed a shoulder back that you definitely needed tonight. And before leaving... But before you left you grabbed a shoulder back that you definitely needed tonight. Sometime later you arrived beneath the V-Tower. Using the escape elevator, you pulled out Valentino's room key, swiping it for the keycard reader, before the elevator began to ascend. Valentino's penthouse was big, or not as big as your mansion, some of them more luxurious and bougie. It was decorated with red, pink and black colors. It was a true bachelor pad with a bar and even a pool stationed on a balcony. The moth demon had taken off his giant red coat and hat. He was sitting on a leopard parent couch, having Angel dust massage his shoulders. Ah, uh, there you are, Samantha baby! He shouted excited. He raised a glass. I'm just so glad you came for us. Angel rolled his eyes. Now, I know you don't like sharing, Sammy, baby, but Angel's magical fingers just found their way onto my shoulders and I couldn't say no. With a cold expression, you sat down before Valentino on a zebra pattern sofa. Your legs crossed. Oh, come on, baby. Don't give me that look. You know I hate it when you look at me like that. Angel, meanwhile, looked at you puzzled. But then you said, Oh, you little sex toy to stop. After a short silence, Valentino growled. You hurt the lady, Angel, baby. The spider had it away. Hope you know what you're doing, toots. Funny, my little star. I was about to ask Valentino the same thing. After a short silence, you opened your mouth, inhaling sharply. Valentino, get on your knees. Show Angel how much you want me. And to Angel's surprise, the moth pimp did as you asked. He crawled over to your feet, embracing them, licking them. The fuck? Angel looked at you. <laughs> I'm sure you never saw Val being a little bottom, huh? From your back you pulled a leather band attached to a chain leash. Put this on. You purred. Valentino looked up at you and inhaled. Don't push it, he hushed. You're the one who wants me to be here. Was your instant reply. Which, Valentino had to admit, was true. And so he put the collar on reluctantly. You smiled softly. Warding him by pulling down the left strap of your dress as a reward. You then kicked off your pumps. Now, worship me properly. You ordered, pulling on the leash. Valentino fell face first against your leg. Andrew's eyes widened. 
It wasn't what Val was doing that surprised him, it was the fact that he was doing it. It wasn't what Val was doing that surprised him, but the fact that he was doing it in the first place. The man who owned his soul was pathetically hugging your leg, licking your skin. Not that it felt bad. Feeling a slimy organ glide over your soft, clean skin was truly a divine feeling. It was quite elating, and your heart was beating fast, filled with anticipation. Angel, sweetheart. I know that I don't have any say over you, and you don't know me, but... Would you follow my orders just for tonight? You felt Velt's teeth scratch over your skin, which earned him a harsh kick in the face. I know he's your toy, Val, but right now, you're mine as well. Me giving him orders just removes a step in communicating with him. Got it? Sammy, baby, I... You placed a hand on his chin, causing the moth to inhale sharply. The nail of your thumb was burring into his cheek, hitting just the right nerve to cause all of his body to cramp up in pain. If you didn't want this, Val, you would have sent him away by now. You're getting off to this, aren't you? Being humiliated right in front of your favorite little plaything. And if not, I order you to. Valentino's lips quivered. You inflict a finger on his cheek. A Angel, could you be a little sweetheart for me? The spider nodded. In my bag I have a couple of toys. I'd like you to choose the one that would look the best inside your boss. The spider grinned. <laughs> Got it, toots. This'll be fun. He really liked you right now.